can't let you hear it, but I never thought there'd be a world where any version of Metallica's Unforgiven played over the Disney logo. All legends are born in truth. And nearly all movies are born with narration. Also, what the hell does that even mean? All villains are tested by yearning. All jocks are motivated by trophies. All babies are bathed in wonder. See how easy it is to spew gibberish? A single petal from the great tree could cure any illness and break any curse. Basically, this is a setup to another Pirates of the Caribbean movie, and we just happen to have another ride at our theme park we can use to rebrand it. And it gives us an easier explanation for Johnny Depp not being here. Don Croppe di Aguirre. Of course, all of this was covered in the Werner Herzog film Aguirre, The Wrath of God, but he was looking for El Dorado, which was the lost city of gold Kevin Klein and Kenneth Brano were looking for in that cartoon from 20 years ago. Why you couldn't just change the name of the explorer is a f***ing mystery, but okay, this famous conquistador was looking for healing petals, sure. That he was found by the guardians of the tree and nursed back to life. The who with the what now? That he demanded they give him the sacred arrowhead, the key to finding the tears of the moon. I know the narration has switched from what we know to the legend of this story, but why is it every time someone does all the hard work to find some sort of treasure, there's an ancient amulet, a purity ring, or a blessed pickaxe that they need to go any further? Whoever is responsible for creating this tree and not making more of them around the world is an asshole. I'll tell you what, I'm going to make this tree that will end lots of suffering, but <laughs> I'm going to make it really hard to find, and then you have to go through all the obstacles before you can use it. The Nagire attacked. This is a lot of exposition for a movie about a f***ing jungle cruise. That will finally unlock the location of pause for dramatic effect. The yeah, this guy is not nearly as smart as Emily Blunt is, and yet she has to sit way up in the rafters somewhere while this dolt gives the speech. But you knew you were putting Ron Burgundy up there, and you didn't bother to change the color of the ink when you gave him this pause for dramatic effect instruction. So this is on you, Emily Blunt. The secretary's gallery is that way. That's racist. Holy sh! did she just chloroform that guy? Anyway, unless she spent five minutes forming this dude, this wouldn't work, so I'm gonna go that route on the synod. Is this a Pink Panther movie? Huh? A woman in the reflection of this sword that I clearly saw run away? Oh well, if I don't see her when I turn around, it was probably the shrooms talking again. Stealing from bad times at the El Royale. Though technically, both are doing a twist on Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. What is she? Oh, that's the arrowhead they keep talking about. And she's stealing it? I thought she was a good guy. I guess maybe her motto is, it belongs in a museum. Oh, actual attempted murder. Yeah, this is the 1999 Mummy movie with a barely there new sheen. Movie tries to make it seem like it would be difficult to capture someone who is using sliding ladders for transportation. I feel like I saw this exact escape by Jack Sparrow in On Stranger Tides. And at the very least, that included an appearance by Dame Judi Dench. Who is that woman? I, I do know who that was. What? Then all we need is a skipper. I'll volunteer. I'm a good skipper. I skip things all the time. Is this the opening of The Lion King again? I feel like that was remade only a couple years ago, but my memory is short and Disney knows that, and I wouldn't put it past him to try again so soon. I think you should see this! I think you need to come take a look at this cliché. The rocks you see here in the river are sandstone, but some people just take them for granted. That motherfucker Dicer from TV Sins wrote the screenplay for this movie. Also, look, I realize this is a movie, so things are exaggerated, but why would this many people take an Amazon cruise on a boat that looks 100 years old? I'm sure the movie is going to give Rock and his boat a Han Solo Falcon relationship, and the old baby will always come through for him, which is fine, but this is 1916. Now, look, even today, in 2021, the city of Iquitos, Peru, which is the launching point for most of the Amazon River cruises, is not accessible by road. You can only get there by river or airplane. Now, I'll go back to 1916 and do some math on how many people can afford to travel by river or air to Iquitos, Peru, and all of them are on this ship right now. But the movie wants you to think there's a thriving competitive riverboat business and they all sold out so this boat can only get the cheap customers. Christ, never gotten so far off the intent of my research but still somehow gotten angrier. Hate! Hate! This movie has a lot of balls to wait 15 minutes to even show its title. The only reason Lily would have ever been in a newspaper is for stealing shit out of a museum. A museum that was, shortly afterwards, a murder scene in which she'd be the prime suspect. Why would the newspaper just put out a story about her looking for the tears of the moon? And if you're saying this story came out before all that business at the museum, then how does someone get that kind of publicity from a failed attempt? If I remember this asshole correctly, all she did was submit a paper to him and he rejected it. So why would there be an article about that? This is like a little pinky thought nothing. <laughs> I hate to be this person, believing Paul Giamatti should have at least three Oscar nominations and at least one win to his name and then see him in a movie like this. Oh, I'm sure he got to pay for a nice house with the check from this movie, and I'm happy for him, but God damn it, can this guy be in something where an academy of some sort can reward him for good work or ignore him again? At least he has one primetime Emmy, I guess, but Jimmy Fallon has four, so where does that put us? Luckily for Frank, he was able to catch up to Nilo just in time to see where he put the key to the boat engine that he locked up. He taps this guy's shoulder, but why? 
He steals an umbrella from a barrel, but the shoeshine guy even looks at him after that and doesn't bat an eye. Did he even crime? It's this f***ing easy to get into Nilo's office. Nobody can get there, and if they could, they wouldn't. This is an orgy of evidence that this movie is definitely going to this place. I could get you there. You literally just said nobody could get there. Let's do something that's safe, so me, you, and your pants. Wow, they actually thought this joke about Lily wearing pants had a super long shelf life in this movie, didn't they? Oh, and on top of all this, Lily is an amazing lock picker. It's almost like maybe we didn't need to waste any time with this f***ing Nilo guy and just made Frank the only captain in Brazil who's desperate enough to make this trip and be on the adventure already. In fact, his boat that kind of looks like an Altos. <laughs> nah, that's a cheap shot. The boat is old, but it in no way resembles an exterior building behind the main house used for shitting and pissing. So you're never going to find a faster boat in the harbor than Laquila. Oh my god, they really are doing a Millennium Falcon thing here. I was only joking, you dickheads! So, we're not even trying to make these animals look real anymore, are we? Also, this is one lucky jaguar, which just happens to be the name of a reggae band that I just looked up. We'll find out later it's Frank's pet jaguar, but how did he know he'd need her? He was in Nilo's office looking for a key with no idea he would be mistaken for Nilo, and Lily was already going to hire him. So, did he just have her outside hiding in a bush somewhere? I guess he could have brought her in case he ran into trouble in Nilo's office, but that means he somehow snuck a jaguar past the whole town to have one at the ready. This CGI big cat bar attack goes on for all the stuff skip. Wait, did I just skip my own all the sometime joke? So wait, did Nilo not wonder how Frank got this job when his boat shouldn't even be working? <laughs> I would have followed this asshole just to laugh at him and would have discovered he stole the key and stopped him dead in his tracks before he even got the chance to put this engine back in his boat. Really? Only in a movie this bloated and desperate for runtime would the hero of the story find herself in a cage full of birds, happening only because Jack and Frank had a disagreement about all of Jack's unnecessary baggage, which, come to think of it, this movie could have been called Unnecessary Baggage and it would have been just fine. Here's the English woman. Hey, uh... So wait, that was the plan? Show up with a cage full of birds, hope that she asked about them, hope that she would walk off the boat to pay for them, giving them the chance to put her in the cage? Are they just being chased by everyone now? There were a handful of bad guys a second ago, but now everyone seems to be a bad guy. All the madcap action from the Cairo scene in Raiders of the Lost Ark, and almost none of the fun. My guess is she can't swim, which is honestly a tired-ass movie trope that needs to end, but can we talk about how f***ing fortuitous the speed and direction of the boat made this gift from God zipline math out perfectly? You booked a river cruise and you can't swim? That's my line, Skipper. Okay, but just a second ago, the henchman came into Todd's quarters to let another lady had escape. Then the sub goes to the surface, but the henchman wasn't wet. He didn't swim down to the sub. So the sub had to surface, pick up the henchman, then dive again, wait for the henchman's bad news, then resurface. That's idiotic. <laughs> This works. Seat them and we can recover the arrowhead from the bottom of the river. That's the plan? This is my engine, nobody touches my engine but me. This is my man thing, nobody touches my man thing but me, cliche. The fast and the cruisiest. Frank! He's blaming that on Frank? It took over 35 minutes for this movie to properly jungle cruise, and once it does, Lily starts writing her notes on Colonel Kurtz and the Heart of Darkness. You know, most people smile when they're on camera, Frank. Actually, not always the case. In the early days of cameras, it was most common for people to not smile so as to help the portrait have an air of sophistication. Wide smiles were also associated with madness or lunacy. In fact, it wasn't until the 1920s that smiling on camera became common, and this movie is set in 1916, so in your face, movie. La Grima de Castell is straight ahead. Stay on course. Frank, it says on the map that it's possible. This argument about which direction to go goes on forever, with Frank not mentioning until long after the conversation becomes boring that he doesn't want to go the other way because of rapids. Is no one going to take this camera off the precarious position right on the ledge? Oh. He moans putting on cream, then she's drawing perfect monkeys from memory, and then suddenly the skipper is playing classical guitar. What? The actual f I believe that the legend is real. We keep hearing people like Lily and German Jesse Plemons state with absolute belief that the tears of the moon exist without any real scientific basis backing it up. They just believe, man. It'd be nice to hear them explain why they believe it's real. Great timing. You brought a jaguar on a small boat and expected it not to be discovered after one day. I don't think the jaguar is to blame. It's not Jesse Plemons' fault, but every time the movie cuts back to his storyline, I find myself nodding off or saying, for f sake. The arrowhead is near. You will find it for me. Let me get this straight. Given his admittedly few options, the prince's plan is to awaken Aguirre, who is now a bunch of snakes, and use the snake network to find the arrowhead? One in the prince's research told him this is possible. I feel like he could have sent word to bring a plane down to Brazil and it could have flown over the Amazon to find Frank before I'd even consider this. Also, why is the German speaking English to the Brazilian snake? After a highly adventurous first day, absolutely nothing of interest happened on this journey for the next however many days, apparently. 
After staring at her necklace cleavage earlier, and now him paying close attention to the necklace transfer, it's clear he's either planning to steal it for his own reasons, or has been possibly hired to steal it. And she'll probably learn of this after he regrets it, but before he has a chance to prove his change of heart to her. I want you to bring that to me. Oh, I, I didn't think it was literally going to happen in the three seconds after I predicted it. I figured we'd dance around it some more, but no. This is a steam engine vehicle with a rudder. It does not handle like a jet ski. God damn. You want to turn back? I really hate this guy. Not in a he's irascible but lovable kind of way. Strictly in an I actually hate this guy kind of way. We find out later that Frank was Aguirre's amazing cartographer. And besides that, he knows the Amazon like the back of his hand. So why is this waterfall a big f***ing surprise? That is not how physics works. <laughs> I never need to see people puking in movies. Audio is enough, you f***ing assholes. Also, I never need to see CGI animals puking in movies. Here's an eavesdropping snake. Probably one of the snakes Kirsten Dunst's boyfriend released with the river water teardropper back in that scene I wish I could forget. I'm sure it's nothing. Snakes don't speak English anyway, right? Right? Here's where Jungle Cruise reveals itself to be a stealth prequel to Sinister. Doing? Nothing chilling at the Holiday Inn. Stealing again! She steals a lot. I've tracked the legend to every village, every island, every shoal. Nothing. But you never had this. Wait, did Frank give up looking for the Tears of the Moon because he couldn't find them? Or is it because he couldn't find the Arrowhead? Because it sounds like he tried to find the Tears of the Moon without the Arrowhead, which is the object everyone knows you need to find them. Movie. Okay, let's do some King Kong now. Why the f*** not? <laughs> <laughs> they don't fight Lily because they're basically just actors and don't want to hurt anybody. But they shot her, McGregor, and Frank with knockout darts before this all started. What's to stop them from doing the same thing here? Why give away the plot? Lily, listen, the truth is I didn't get a chance to call this entire thing off. How did you even have a chance to call the entire thing on? You had ten minutes to get this expedition started from the moment you got the job. And most of that time was used lowering an engine into your boat. And you got attacked by Germans in a submarine. When was there a time to orchestrate any of this? Was there a secret meeting during the time you traveled by map that we didn't see? No one will be seated during the scene where Slash explains to our heroine which of the Guns N' Roses albums he considers to be canon. You must turn water to stone. Then... Mend a broken heart. God damn it! I don't give a sh about these healing petals anymore. Let's just discover penicillin already. This fucking quest is too hard and not worth it. For tears to bloom, the great tree must be under the rare crying moon. There is one in two days. Holy sh! Are you serious? God damn, that's convenient. We'll take it. Please tell him that he misjudges my determination, also my driving skills. Please tell Doctor Pants. What the f is this? An '80s sitcom? This one is a driver. Go. And now we're in the Ewok village and I want to scream! And now we're fighting an army of the dead! And I, I'm so exhausted by this movie's unwavering drive to avoid doing even a single original thing. <laughs> Guys, I just can't get on board with a white candy man. Frank, Frank, get it. Hold on. Come on. <sighs> Movie tries to prove the point that if you insert any character looking at other characters like they're crazy, it must make it way more amusing than it would be without them. Let's try it, shall we? Oh, God. <laughs> and I am Iron Man. Du kannst eins von den Kindern behalten. I just don't understand why this guy's made of bees. You get cursed into the Amazon forever, but if someone wants to pour river water on you, you become bees or snakes. What is the goddamn function of making a curse that does that? Ah, oh, for fuck's sake, why don't you just make this a cartoon? Throw in a few songs, pixar fire everyone. Use the same actors if you want, but physics this silly demand animation. This is that deleted scene from the Avengers where Loki used the Mind Stone to control Groot. It does seem out of place for the Avengers, but I'm kind of surprised they snuck it into this movie. So continue the dumbest curse rules ever so that the screenwriter can give it out to the heroes. I would argue that they are no farther from the river than they were two minutes ago, but go on with your bullshit. Movie. Yeah, but she can't stay away from the river forever, right? She's not going to walk through the jungle to get to the tree. So why don't they use their bee and snake network to find her and follow her? I'm roughly 400 years old. Roughly? Can you not, can you not count that high? Why roughly? Frank, would you like to bite down on my stick? What the hell, Moomy? That's literally the title of the fan fiction I just started writing to distract me from watching this movie. So what do we do when we need the audience to learn a bunch of backstory all at once? Just let The Rock say it all. I don't know, do some reshoots, silly wig, bada boom, bada bing. Won't the audience get bored? I said bada bing! Gide was happy because he was closer than ever to finding a cure for his daughter. But he grew impatient. Agide demanded they give him the arrowhead. This story leaves out a lot. Like, 
Was Aguirre asking about the arrowhead before he got impatient? Was he told any of the rules? And why couldn't he simply ask for one pedal to bring home? If the whole reason for this expedition was to save his daughter, then that seems like a reasonable request that he didn't even bother with. He went straight from being cured to, Ah, I'm impatient! Without any real reason given. I trapped them in a cave, where the jungle couldn't take them back to the river. You mean all these vines couldn't just drag them all out of the cave? Or do a relay kind of thing with the other vines in the jungle? I think it's kind of weird you give all these magical properties to the jungle, but somehow it gets stumped by this sh**. I'm wondering why Trader Sam and McGregor are out canoeing, since McGregor broke his leg or ankle or something and needs medical attention. Why couldn't he just get on Frank's boat with Trader Sam and hang out? I'll tell you why. Because he needs to be captured so the movie can happen. Your sister and the Arrowhead were here, now I need to know where she is going. I'm gonna twist myself into a plot pretzel here because I'm super confused. I thought the bee told the prince where Lily was going already. Now, there's no way the bee could actually know where she was going because bees didn't follow her. But Aguirre specifically told the bee guy... Decidle donde ha ido. Apparently the bees told him where she was, which is virtually worthless, unless you somehow luck into finding her brother and threaten to kill the Puka Machuna. Man, it's f***ing bright out here on the Amazon River at night. Are there chandeliers somewhere? Everything that you see that's new in this world, I've seen hundreds of thousands of times. No, you haven't. You've been stuck in the Amazon for 400 years. How have you seen everything that's new? Even if you mean stuff that's new to her, this is an incorrect statement. Where? McGregor points immediately to the correct place. He could have sent the prince on a three-day wild goose chase, but no, he picked the exact spot. Why the f*** are these bees still here? Why haven't they flown back to Hivecore Henry? You have to trust me. Will someone please tell the movie that I'm not speaking to it right now? Thank you. Oh no! The piranhas start attacking Frank, even though we know he's immortal and will live through it. Oh no! Turn water to stone. Nope. Can't say this out loud, like that clue would have led you in any way to the underwater drain you just saw. And you guys only figured that out because Frank kind of guessed and was right. It's a sh clue that led to a puzzle that wasn't challenging, and it had a booby trap that didn't even slow you down in a meaningful way. Okay, so once all the water drains out, they can find the crystal skull, and that will lead them to one-eyed Willie's treasure? Luckily for me, it's my choice. Well, it shouldn't be because you have very poor judgment. Emily, blunt. You know more about the tears of the moon than anyone, so you know how to make it bloom. My question for the prince is, how was he planning on finding all this without her? Like, he was very clearly trying to kill everyone earlier, and now he realizes he needs Lily. And I thought he was a Tears of the Moon scholar as well, since he wrote papers on it and sh**. Now he's just a low-rent belloc who can't find out anything on his own, despite his vast knowledge on the subject. You know how to make it bloom, you will do this for me. This was the last thing my college girlfriend ever said to me. Traitor Sam said we would need to fix a broken heart. Whenever I see a movie like this where the heroes have to solve puzzles and find artifacts to make magical totem of some sort come to life, I wonder, was it always this way? Did someone create the Tree of Life and then invent a series of puzzles to find it and operate it? Or did they discover that the Tree of Life worked this way? I know movies don't give a shit about this and you've probably already fallen asleep during this sin, but these things have never made sense to me. They are adventures that could only exist inside a movie where crucial details are left out so that we don't think too deeply about it. But I'm thinking deeply about it. Comment a heart that isn't. Broken. I would remove every sin if they broke this arrowhead apart and it ruined the entire adventure because they weren't supposed to do that. Man, I don't see what any of this has to do with the Declaration of Independence. This pedal force gumps its way straight to Frank's hand. This is yet another mindlessly staged and edited action scene, pretty much in the dark, filled with CGI. I almost didn't say anything about it because it's such a boring, meaningless fight. It almost made me too lazy to add a sin for it. Almost. Is it just me, or is this trip to the entrance to the cave taking way longer than it took to enter the cave and get to the tree earlier? This is like that super long runway in Fast and Furious 6 that went through 18 zip codes before it ended. A brother's blade cuts deepest. Contradicting Cheryl Crow. Give me the battle! Why don't you just take it? Oh. F*** you, CGI cat, you're not even real! Uh, please deposit two more petals. Uh. Jesus Christ, this magical healing pedal took forever to break this curse. Why the f*** does it take so long? Does it need to kill all your hopes and dreams first? <laughs> what the actual f***? Did the moon go past the moon door, then step back as if it needed to confirm it saw a naked lady in the shower and wasn't just imagining it? The f***ing f*** is this extra bullsh**? By the way, you f will have to climb this tree again to get this goddamn thing now. Oh yeah! Remember when Paul Giamatti looked like this movie's villain, and then he just disappeared for almost the entire film? The Amazing Spider-Man 2'd him again! It was brighter on the Amazon at night than it is in this lecture hall during the day! Why does London look like an old-timey version of Free City? Oh, not the bees! Not the bees! <laughs>